The next batch of figures I'm going to paint is this bunch of Nazis. Boo, hiss, Nazis. We all hate them. There's just two different sculpts here, but there are 12 figures all up. So it really is just a matter of going through it and um, a bit like a production line, just going through each color as you go. So I'm starting off with the flesh colors, doing all the skin bits first, and then I'll just do the uniforms and get these done as fast as possible with the base coats. Get these Nazis over and done with. Okay, let's get started. And of course, uh, doing the flesh areas first, I'm using Kislev Flesh and I'm just painting all the hands and faces. And for the shirts, I used an eclectic mix of rotting flesh, steel legion, drab and talon sand, just to get the shade I wanted. At this point, I just kept going with the base colors and painted a whole figure, just to make sure I was happy with the color scheme that I had for these Nazi figures. So it's sort of a pre-World War II brown shirt kind of outfit. And I'm quite happy with that look, so I'll continue painting the other ones with these colours. A Mournfang brown as well for the brown parts. Sturm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black, a mix of those for my black. And as you can see, just painting from then on, a little bit of silver on the belt buckles and other buttons, things like that. A red for the armband. Once all those base colours are done, I get some Seraphim Sepia and um, paint the shirt and flesh colors, leaving the black alone. Um, I don't have to wash that, but just all the brown colors are washed with seraphim sepia. Very easy to do. Well, I've given those figures a wash and I've done the bases and they look great. I don't think I'm going to bother with highlighting them. I think they look good enough as they are. Maybe one day I'll come back and do some highlights, but um, I think They've turned out really well without having to bother, so I think I'll just get on to the next batch of figures and call those ones done. Right, let's continue with the Nazis, and I think I can get about 12 of these done a night. That's base colours and wash and bases. So I'm just going to churn on through these ones that are all pretty basic and uh, get these done tonight if I can. Here's that next bunch of Nazis, and very simple paint job, just uh, flesh on the flesh bits. A sort of grey green on the great coats and a darker green on the lapels of the great coat. And uh, these look fine, but these will definitely need highlighting because they're a bit boring by themselves without highlighting. So I'll come back to these a bit later. In the meantime, I'm just ploughing through some other figures and doing um, base coats. So let's get on to the next batch. This is my next batch of Nazis, just six of them, and I've done all of those uh, Nazi minions. And then over here, a few more hero figures. Um, just three more. And this will be my next batch to get done. Here's the last bunch of Nazis. They're done. I can do some more highlighting on that later, but that's base colors and wash. And they've turned out quite nicely. Here's the base colors and wash for these other three main characters. Very easy to do. Um, particularly for these dark ones, it's just an all over dark color. When you're doing a dark color like that, you don't need to wash it, of course, because it's very dark. You can just work up a few highlights from the from the black, or in this case, uh, this one has got a, well, both of them actually have a mix of black and dark blue. So no need to wash those. I just washed the flesh colors with the chestnut color. And this one has had a wash on the flesh as well. And then I'll work up a few highlights on the black. Now it's time to get started on a bunch of frogmen. Now there's 20 of these, so I'm going to do them in two batches of 10. And I'm going to do them pretty quickly because they're pretty simple models. They're just green and they've got a bit of cloth on them as well, which I'll do in various different colors. My base color for these is going to be Lauren Forest, which is a nice dirty olive green. There they are, easily base coated. Now I'm just going to use a selection of different browns uh, to maybe blues, I don't know, a few other colours, just to paint the bits of cloth that are still clinging to their toady bodies. Um, brown for the staff and metal for the hook on the end. Um, black belts, very simple colours, just filling in the spaces. As you can see, when I put the green over, I was really messy. It didn't matter because I'm going to be painting over these cloth areas anyway. So. You don't have to put on the green neatly, just make sure you cover all the toady skin areas. 
There's the undercoating done for that batch. I've used Bugman's Glow for the tongues. You can see here's one with the tongue sticking out. Um, I've painted black inside the mouth and just in the eyes as well. And um, they're ready to wash once they've dried. And we're getting there. You can get through these quite quickly. They're pretty easy to do. All right, next up, it's time to give these uh, frogmen a wash. I'm using a mix of Seraphim Sepia and Coella Green Shade. Um, this gives me a sort of greeny, browny wash, which will do well for these. Um, when you're doing your washes, just mix the appropriate colours. As, as usual, you'll be using um, Agrax Earthshade or Seraphim Sepia or some kind of brown or fleshy wash. Um, but if you have a colour, um, mix in a bit of colour and uh, whether it's a blue or green, just to give it a bit of colour depth as well uh, and fill in all those um, shaded areas. So here you can see I'm mixing those two together so I don't have a too strong green or too strong brown and, and it's just a matter of just pretty much covering the entire figure. Unless of course I've got a really light brown um, piece of uh, clothing that I want to wash a different colour but really it's just all over wash nice and easy. You don't have to water down your washes uh, they're fine as is but just remember to use a, a dry brush to soak up any areas where it, it pulls too much. And there you go there's the washed figure and you can see how that wash has gone into the little recesses and added a bit of depth. Once that's dry I want to do a bit of a simple highlight and because these are quite textured figures I can just do it with a dry brush. So I'm using this light green. That's going to be my dry brush colour. And I've got a piece of paper towel which I'm going to wipe the excess off onto. And remember when you're dry brushing it's sometimes good to use um, a chisel ended brush like this and uh, maybe an, an older brush because this does damage the brush over time. So I've wiped most of it off and I'm just doing a very light dry brush on the bits where the uh, light would hit. So target areas like knees and elbows and the ends of the hands and the top of the head, they're the areas that are going to catch the light the most and will give your model a sense of depth. Now it's time to highlight the uh, fabric, the little remnants of fabric and rags that are on the figures. And here I'm doing um, highlight by hand using a brush with a nice tip and using quite a contrasting colour here so I get a strong contrast. And you can either do one level of highlight or if you really want to go over the top you can put in a second level of highlight too. And just keep that second level very small, so just very much the edges and tips of uh, places that would reflect the light. That's not really necessary for fabric like this, one level of highlight is enough. Finding the right level of contrast between your base colour and your highlight colour is just something that comes with experience. Sometimes I'll do a highlight and my colour will be too close to the base colour and it's really not worth doing. Uh, sometimes there's too much of a contrast, you really just have to experiment until uh, it works, but um, if in doubt just go a little bit more on the contrast side because remember you're seeing these from a distance so you want a sense of depth in those uh, folds of fabric. Now using a very light flesh colour I'm just going to highlight that tongue a little bit. I used a dark pinky flesh for the tongue and now this light highlight will really make it Jump out, yeah. Maybe a little tip of white on the end as well. Just for that drippy saliva effect. Now some white dabs on top of the black for my eyes. And for normal eyes of course you do this white dab and then put a black dab in the middle. Or if it's a monster like this you can just paint it a flat colour. I'm also using the white to pick out the teeth and this is where you want a nice brush with a good sharp point and you don't even have to exactly hit 
the sculpted teeth, even if they're sculpted well, you just have to put in those little dabs because they're so tiny you will be seeing them only from a distance. Sometimes while you've got the white on your brush you can do a few little dabs of very high highlights just to make things jump out a little bit. Sometimes it's good to increase the depth of um, the figure by painting it a bit of black lining. This is how we used to do it before washes. You'd actually paint a line of black around uh, the different parts of the figure, but uh, you don't have to do that with washes. That's mostly done with washes these days. But sometimes putting in a bit of a black outline around things makes them jump out a little bit more and defines them better. And there he is. All he needs now is a little bit of yellow, a little dab of yellow in the eyes, and he's done. So here are our um, frog guys, um, all painted up, dry brushed, a few little dabs of very, very yellowish green, just as little highlights, maybe just on the tips of the fingers and knuckles and things like that. And there's the whole batch done. Now I'm going to get on to these clue tokens. Uh, instead of cardboard tokens in the Kickstarter set, you had these clue tokens, which come in very different shapes and sizes. As you can see, there's some very tiny ones and some much larger ones. And I'm just going to paint these very quickly. And in fact, I'm going to speed up the whole process, as you can see, and we'll get through these. And it's just a matter of slapping down the color. So because these don't actually have bases and they're hard to hold, sometimes I had to paint half of them, let it dry, and then come back and paint the other half. But I'm just using whole bunch of colors. And this is one of the great things about your wet palette. This is my red grass wet palette, which is great. Um, but as you use it and you put more colors on your palette, you can uh, go back and use them again because of course they stay wet. So I'm just choosing appropriate colors, of course, bone color for any skeletons, gray for rocks, um, dark brown for uh, the chests. Um, the corpse is dressed in the same colors as my other Nazis. The table has got different colored bottles on it. Um, just making this up as I go along, really. And of course, when I give them all a nice wash afterwards, it'll blend all these colors together and make them work together quite well. Now, these witch figures are really simple to do. As you can see, mostly Gorthor Brown, Abaddon Black, and Mechanus, Mechanicus Standard Gray. Um, that's actually the three colors that I used for them. And after that, I'll give them a wash and then a very quick dry brush. While I'm thinking of it, uh, here's another little tip, and I'll just illustrate it with this uh, Stormcast model that I happen to be painting for Shadespire while I'm doing these other figures. I've seen a lot of people online uh, when they're doing particularly nice paint jobs, they very carefully paint one area of a figure all the way to just absolutely finished before they start on another area. And, you know, if you want to paint this way, it's absolutely fine. I find it a bit strange though because it's putting all your effort into one area and then if you go into an area and then make a mistake you're painting over something that's finally done. So what I'm trying to say is you can be very rough about your painting if you think about the order in which you're going to paint areas. So in this case I've painted all the base coat on this guy here and I want to wash it in a seraphim sepia. Now the top of the hammer is going to be in silver and I don't want to wash that with sepia so I'll leave that unpainted. So I can just wash this whole figure in seraphim sepia in that sort of chestnutty colour. I'll do that whole wash and I'll get some of it over on the hammer, it doesn't matter, it'll be messy. But then I can paint over this area and wash it carefully with a black colour. So let me just illustrate that, I'll just put a wash all over this area. Remember when you're doing a wash that you can use a brush with a dry brush to soak up areas of ink where it pulls too much. So if you've got too much in a recess, just use a dry brush to soak it up a little bit so you can control that flow of ink. Okay, there he's all washed. You can see the axe head is all messy. It's got paint and ink all over it, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to paint over that when this is dry. I'm going to paint over that with my silver color and as you can see I haven't had to go to any effort to keep that area nice and neat. Now that's dry I'll paint on my metal color 
and I can just paint over all the messy bits. Sometimes you might need two coats depending on the thickness of the paint. But as you can see, I've saved just a little bit of time by not having to be neat when I did that other work. And if you think carefully about the order in which you paint the different parts of a miniature, you can save yourself quite a bit of time using these techniques. It's quite hard to talk and paint at the same time for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, you can um, save yourself a lot of time being very, very neat with everything because that's just an unnecessary effort. There we go, that bit's painted and then I'll wash this in black and uh, this will be ready to do more highlighting. And I hope you get the idea of the fact that you don't have to pick an area and do it to completion. You can do everything very roughly and leave all the cleaning up till later on in the process. Right, I'm just finishing off the rest of the generic monsters in the Hellboy set. Uh, these are the Harpies and they're very easy to do. Uh, there's a grey pillar and grey base. In my case I'm doing my base as grey. Um, and then I've just painted the wings of uh, this colour which is scrag brown. Um, I painted the lower feathers a darker brown, Rhinox hide. And uh, of course flesh on the fleshy areas, uh, the upper torso and the face. Uh, the claws were done with bubonic brown and then after it had dried I gave the whole thing a wash of seraphim sepia ink let that dry and then just basically dry brushed the highlights on so I dry brushed the um, light blue with Vestigore flesh and dry brushed the dark blue with Rhinox hide with a bit of white in it actually with a bit of um, uh, light flesh in it and uh, the claws with uh, bubonic brown with a bit of white and just dry brushed and then uh, getting my flesh color which is Kislev flesh and mixing a bit of white with it added a few simple highlights to the face and the breasts so very easy to do and then of course just uh, black in the mouth and eyes um, little white dabs in the eyes followed by little red dabs and some little dabs for teeth and there's a pack of harpies all done they're very easy to do. Even easier to do are the scary birds or the black birds or whatever you want to call them. Uh, here they are and of course they're just black with a dry brush of grey, um, Mechanicus standard grey and um, there it is there and a uh, very slight lighter dry brush with uh, the same grey with a little bit of white in it and I'll just pick out those eyes. I might just do little yellow eyes to pick those out and um, really there's not much else I need to do on these. I'm just leaving the claws grey, um, keeping these very simple because they're just a blackbirds. So that is all the monsters done. So uh, we're doing rather well and um, all I've got to do now is um, get onto more of the character figures which is of course all individual paint jobs so I'll get onto those next and then uh, that'll be in the next episode and then the episode after that will tackle the big monsters and devote an episode to that so i'll see you in part three of this hellboy painting tutorial overview and i hope you've enjoyed it esoteric order of gamers order of um i'm on facebook and twitter and instagram and of course patreon should you choose to support me which i would very much appreciate hope you've enjoyed this see you next time